once again to Mirashad, episode 22. Did you say Matchbreakers, the game that simulates the dating game with only cards? <laughs> oh, that sounds All funny. right. So, where is the party? Everything went perfectly fine, right? Those. If if we look at the map, there's fine. no problems with where Mirashad was. Is, is, is. Is, yeah, is, yeah. No, everything's perfectly fine. Um, things are not on fire. This is fine. Um, in fact, I think we were all dining in Haddup's new restaurant is where we left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on board, Jess. Wish. Um, so last time we uh, set out for town, we ran into the Unicorn X Machina. Um, and it teleported us to uh, Mirashad, so we got back way faster than Phelan was thinking. Uh, we gave him a recap of events, and he brings people to take Arena. Oh, well, first of all, we went to his classroom, and he's like, I can't come right now. Go hide somewhere, you know? So we went back to Constog's and my dorm. And so then once after class, then he, like, came... And he was like, uh, you know, we told him everything that happened and he got some people to take Arena away and question her. Uh, Comstog slept because she was so exhausted. Uh, Kent uh, was looking into what horsepower is and he was questioning people and they got frustrated with him. Um, Erasmus was journaling his feelings. Um, Brianna audited some bard classes and tried unsuccessfully to find accordion lessons. Um, Erasmus was trying to communicate with the stag, who is also fine, not on fire. Uh, um, this is so sad that the stag is not here. Right. Um, and Brianna tracked down the Sashat Choir that met every third and sixth day of the week. Um, and they, so it wasn't a meeting day that day, so Brianna was like, noting that down to come mm -hmm. back uh the next day phelan sent us a message to meet him and so after breakfast we went to phelan and he informed us that the rage is dead uh they rushed out to i guess kind of like go after us uh they were jealous of the mission we were given or something and um they were killed by dire tigers so we are the singular group um he test it, he tested something out on Brianna. He drew a circle around her, and it was protection from evil. So we found out that the book was slowly, you know, corrupting anyone that had failed their will safe. Um, he uh, proposed that we go to a cabin in the wastes and bury the book and detox for, from magic for 10 days. Kent didn't want to go, and it was sort of an all or nothing thing, but we had three days to decide. Uh, Kent continued his research into horsepower. <clears throat> Brianna went to bard classes again, and this time she was successfully able to track down um, accordion lessons. Um, it was a real suck-up, too. <laughs> coffee and everything. Well, that was choir practice. That happened oh, afterwards. Cool. And yes. yeah, they were like, they were basically hazing me. Mm -hmm. um, basically telling me to go get their coffee and donuts and whatever else. Um, and Brianna did not spit in any of the coffees or anything like that. Um, Much the DM chagrin. <laughs> she did memorize four names that probably don't matter anymore because they're definitely on fire. Um, she spends the time... She, oh yeah, so she did the errands. Erasmus went to Spell Component Club and they were experimenting with Quicksilver. <laughs> this one dude named Carles like, has possibly poisoned himself. Um, he he convinced them to disband the Spell Component Club and form society to study the effects of components on wizards. Um, Constog will... I, I, I didn't, no, they ran with that. <laughs> I was just that yet another hapless participant in Steve's chaos. My chaos? You guys always cause the chaos. I had nothing to do with chaos. Uh, right. <laughs> Uh, Constog was mulling things over in the library and ran into her friends and was kind of like trying to get information from them. Um, and then Brianna met with Agnar 
and um, she kind of let some things slip that she kind of thought that Agnar already knew and he didn't. So, but that probably doesn't matter because Agnar's probably on fire. <laughs> um, so much fire. Yeah, but Agnar told her not to go to the wastes. Uh, that Phelan obviously wanted the book for himself. Um, he said that the things that the book was telling me to do from the mistress were probably actually from the mistress and I should do them. Um, because, you know, letting someone die, sometimes people want to experience death or something like that. Um, he also tried to remove my memory, but Brianna saw through that. And basically... Um, she kind of like mistrusts him a little bit. She's like not so like trusting of him now, but um, as she's leaving Agnar, she starts hearing screams and actually everyone starts hearing screams and we kind of like all go out into the street and there's like all kinds of undead like invading the campus and Hadhub approaches the party and gave us uh, these blank cards from Candor and um, Nikolai was telling Hadhub, you need to get to safety, run away, don't fight. And we all got, like, teleported away. Yeah. Um, without the stack or without Hadhub, very rude. Yeah. You, st you feel like you were teleported away, because everything definitely starts to shift in terms of where you are. And everything vanishes. In front yes, and your stomachs feel kind of queasy as your vision starts to... Uh, come forth again. Um, and you will find yourselves in a very familiar place. Make sure this is the right layout here. Yep. Uh, did I put all your characters on here? Yeah, I did. Um, you will find yourself outside of the home of Harcourt or of uh, Red. No, God damn it. Too many harvests. Roderick. Thank you. I have too many har har harvests in my head. Of Roderick. Yeah, that's a common problem for the harvests. Harvest. When you get a chance, can you update my video tag? It says I'm Magus 3, but I'm now Magus Yes, I will. I will update that soon. Thank you. Um, it says I have gray eyes, but I actually have blue eyes. What? Do, 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 put your eyes on there. Do, 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 do. Um, little new order joke there. Yeah, uh, and there is standing on the porch uh, a pair of familiar sights. Um, let me grab his top down. I didn't get a circle around it, but we'll deal with that later. Um, there stands a familiar figure. Uh, as if waiting for you uh, on the porch. Um, is it Candor? Um, perhaps he can introduce himself. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a real sense of drama in that. I just want <laughs> you to know. Yep. Yep. Am I just like whittling or something? Uh, yeah, you can be doing whatever you were. Well, essentially, you would have been finishing up the casting of the spell. Um, oh, yeah. And you... So that perception, actually, Brown, as you're looking at, at him, he looks like he is in terrible shape. Um, he looks like he got hit by, like, the whole army of the undead and then, like, an exhaustion effect from, like, some kind of vampire and then, like, all kinds of terrible things. He looks exhausted it's hit by a smooth criminal oh what what happened what what uh, candor are you are you okay mm, more or less. guys guys where where are we oh nice hey. buddy and drops to his knees immediately and assumes a uh almost like prayer position okay you're on holy soil now This is as far into Harveston as he's ever been. How does Hadhup look? Uh, Hadhup looks okay. Um, Hadhup was is just standing there like the kind of the rest of you. His he feels a little awkward, but uh, he's looking around. I, how, where are we? 
You're here. That's all that matters. Here where? I this don't know. Harveston. 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 I like the sound of it. Hail the eight. Hail me. What's the eight? That's uh, his, and I'll kind of like point at Kent, his deity. What kind of food does the eight like? Hail the eight. He just, like, he's, he's so overcome he can't okay. talk. They like whatever random food they can luckily score. Oh, that that sounds like a very a very goblinoid god. I would warn against praying at the shrine though, unless you actually follow the eight. Oh, I I, I, I there's a shrine. Yeah, just there's don't, no food there. There's no yeah, food there. There's n there's no, not but pain. Oh, pain. Where are we? Why are we in a place where there's not but pain? What? Why? What? Uh, well, the other Dean here. Right, that guy. Uh, that guy who said to give the cards to you. Yeah, I think he he teleported us here or brought us here somehow. Yeah, sort of. Not exactly. He he said it wasn't typical Candor answer. He said it would be good for you, like that it would save you. Yes. Uh. How are we inside of the uh, teleportation range? Or? You're no, right now you're all standing outside. Okay, so it's uh inside the house. Yes, right? inside the house. Okay, that's why I couldn't it's remember okay. exactly. Uh, it works like teleportation, but it's a little more complicated than that. Oh, I've I've never been teleported today, or at all. Sorry, I didn't mean to say today. I'm a little confused. Oh. By the way, thank you for uh, giving them those things. Those yeah, things. I don't want them to die. Yeah, it'd be a shame. It would. It'd be a shame. That I wouldn't have a garden. I think our garden's gone, buddy. Go what? No! Gone. Yeah, I don't know that we'll be able to go back there. But the, the plants there, who's going to eat them? <laughs> Maybe we'll have to go wild and free. I hope they're okay. One day I want to eat them, okay? If we if we make it back and they're still okay, can I eat them? Maybe. Okay. So, so Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Oh, yes, you're probably all wondering why you're here. LD8 <laughs> Yeah, well, there was all manner of undead creatures, and it looked pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, that was something you guys were supposed to encounter a while, a few episodes ago, but uh, things changed, plans changed, the timeline changed, and then I had to change it so you guys could be here. You know, that kind Epis of stuff. Episodes like, you know, when you get sick, or... Uh, Sure, more like viewing globe episodes, but it, 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 oh yeah, you haven't been there. Um, but anyways, uh, yes, yes. Hmm. So you saw that. Uh, hmm. yeah. Well, I have something I need you guys to do. Wait, are you going to tell us what happened first? Yes, the school is under attack by zombies. Or... Why? Do I know why? Um, so that's the thing that you're trying to figure out right now is like, you sort of understand why you have reason to believe it has something to do with Steve Alor, but you have, you don't have enough details to go further. That's right. Especially because it was supposed to happen yes. before, now it's happening now. Uh, remember that Steve Lore guy I was talking about? Mm hmm Yes. Something within the vicinity of him or thereabouts. Something involving him. I'm not entirely certain, though. He's the one that was weakening the protections on Mirashad? That makes sense, yes. So, I guess it was weaker than we thought. Or you said it was already supposed to happen? 
Yeah, it was supposed to happen a while back, but things had changed, and I hadn't kept up with things. I assumed that they would be relatively in line with what I was expecting, but they weren't, and here we are. <laughs> uh, yes, so I had to use something similar to teleport. Not exactly. More or less, I had to move you guys from there in the timeline to here in the timeline, which is what had up to you. Yeah, wait, what? Because otherwise, then you're feeling an anomaly behind like that, the ripple effects happen, and things start to get wonky. And I'm an changes. anomaly? Yes, you are, buddy. Oh, that sounds awesome. It is. What kind of abilities do I get at this anomaly? Um... You can figure it out later, it's fine. You can really enjoy a lot of tasty plants. Throughout the really? And life. That's yeah. an anomaly power? That sounds great. Everything you know seems to be an anomaly power. If we uh, if we get through this all right, I'll make sure to find you the tastiest plants on all of the country. Really? I'll do my Oh, best. that would be great. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, yes, so... Where was I? There's something you want us to do. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I need you guys to go to go east, in fact, to Fort Jericho. Fort Jericho? Yes, there's a key there I need. Is it a physical key or is it some kind of metaphorical thing? This one is physical. Okay. Yes, mostly. Yes, yes, it is Where physical. Is it? Um... Do I remember exactly where it's Yeah, it is, it is being held by the son of Jericho Carbinger, uh, oh, yes, which I think I gave you the name for, and I'll have to go back through. Let me check your notes. Um, is it like... Yes, that, that's not, my name. It's not eight feet long or anything crazy like nope. that? It's an actual key. Yes. Okay. This, this is what a was... relatively normal thing. What was the last name of As such. Uh Carbinger. Oh. Car Carbinger, yes. Jericho his, Carbinger. I have his real his full name in here somewhere. I forgot to throw it in my other notes when I was typing them out to Ryan. If we give him your name, will he know you? Or do you have a note that we can give him so that he knows that we're legitimate? Is he going to willingly give it to us? Yeah, I was just about to ask that one. Uh, as far as I know, he should. If you give him my name, uh, that should be that should suffice. Uh, oh, actually, yeah, I, you don't I have his. Him. I just thought about it. You don't have his name. Oh. Um, uh, because you. I know Jericho. Yes, name. but you stopped being Jericho when the campaign ended, so you don't have Jericho's oh, God. name. Well, Jericho or you don't have Jericho's son's mentor. name. Yes. Um. And you by now, Jericho is is probably dead. That would be safe to assume. It's been a long yes, time. Yes, it's been a very, so. very long time. Yes. Uh, yes. I don't quite remember his son's name, but... Chris. Car Carbinger is the, the, the family name, the surname. Okay. So... Uh, yes. Oh, go ahead. So you just need us to get this key in return, or...? Yes, come back here, specifically. Um, and, uh... Yes, that's more or less it for the time being. Why do we need to get it? I'm just curious, like, why isn't this something that you can get? Well, you're the substantials. So I why mean, do we need to get it? I mean, I can't just go over there. I mean, I, I, I'm not looking the healthiest right now. I'm pretty low on spell points at the moment. And okay. And pretty low, I mean very low. Actually, it took quite a lot out of me to teleport. Well, to move you guys here. Teleport's the wrong word. I don't want to. Is there anything that we should do to prepare ourselves for this task? We should pray to the eight. You should. There's a shrine right over there, Kent, if you want to go pray for a. Lunch. No, no, the shrine is much further down the road. But I have never been this far from the shrine. I have never been this deep into Harveston. Candor, thank you for this blessing. Thank you for this blessing. Thank you. He begins to grovel at your feet. Boy, oh boy. Oh my. 
take a step back real quick to make sure he doesn't get anything on my shoes. <laughs> uh, yes. Very good. Uh, yes. Are you able to rest inside, Candor? Oh, yes, yes. I should be able to rest inside, okay, until you guys get back. Ah! <laughs> We're gonna go into the home of the Avatar! Yeah, there's dirty poetry inside if you get bored. Ah, those were the days. <laughs> those and the is days. now yeah. visibly shaking with anxiety. You're a fan of dirty poetry. <laughs> this is the home of the Ava A Avatar. Oh, that, yes, I suppose. <laughs> oh, if you're planning on using teleportation to get back, uh, you won't be able to teleport into the house, so... Well, you been in there anyway, so it'd probably be a bad idea because you... Anyways. You would probably feel like it's not a good idea just in general for them to teleport back. There are all kinds of complications. How would we teleport? Yeah, none of us, I don't believe any of us can teleport. Are you not having a fall for that yet? But anyways. Oh, we're babies. What's a level? Oh, uh, you haven't read the book. Okay. Well, if you've read the, the wrong book, bad book. When I get my other book back, I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> would you be opposed to Hadhub being here with you? I mean, I think there's food inside too that he can food. Eat, yes. No. I'm hungry. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, it'd probably sure be Hadhub best. Stay safe. Exactly. I don't. No offense, Hadhub, but I wouldn't want you to get caught up in something and. You know, and what? I don't. I don't. I don't fight. I cook. Exactly. I, I, why you got? I'm gonna stay here, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what we were saying. Is you? I'm just. Stay I'm here. just making sure. Food. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to come with us, bud. And this was, I think, at one point, a working farm, so there might be <gasps> weeds. I might get to eat weeds. Are I'm there pretty weeds? sure you can eat as many as you want. Uh, there is a lot of overgrowth on the farm, but uh, that the party knows about from last time they were here. Okay. Yeah. And we found the body. Yep. Oh, uh, I'll instruct him to not eat the weeds around that area in case that area is okay. I So only eat the weeds over there. Oh, no, no, no. There was... Body over there. Oh no! I, I'm pointing over. Your, look, look where my finger is. Oh, I'm in the other part. I heard. I listened, mostly. Oh, my bad. I'm. Sorry. It's okay. I misunderstood. It's okay. Lots of people think I don't listen. It's normal. I get the same thing. You just got shamed by a goblin. <laughs> no, I don't want to shame him. Oh, I wasn't shamed. I get that quite a bit. People don't think I'm listening. People think I'm absent-minded just because that's one of the flaws I have. <sighs> what? That's why I never go oh. first in combat. What? So, um, we're going further into harvesting territory. We're going to Fort Jericho where we were last. Going time. to Fort Jericho. Yes, yes, and then come back here, and you guys should be safe from. Although we don't have a cart this time, so that might it'll take us probably a little longer to get there. How far is it? It is a long travel. So for a moment, I will take you back to the world map. And let's discuss the length of time it's going to take. So you are in Harveston. Fort Jericho is 140 miles from here. As the crow flies. As the crow flies. You can kind of move as the crow flies without that flying part. As the crow meanders. Um, but that will take you several days to get to. Uh, likely about a little over a week. It should nothing. take us about a week to get there. Is that going to impede things? And then a week to get back. Yep. Yeah. There's nothing here to uh, speed that up. There is, is there? nothing here, unfortunately, to speed that up. Not unless, Not until you get the key. If you had the key now, there would be things here that could speed things up. But you don't have the key, so you what can't speed the... things up. What will the key do? Well, the key will 
Did you give me those notes or did we talk about uh, it? The key will that. open up a special place in the basement. Mm, yes, it will open up the basement. It's that house. What there's will a lot that of, do? There's a lot of magical warnings and such on there to prevent things like Steve or from seeing us. And there's a couple of, there's some magical items and other things down there that you'll have access to once you get down there that uh, uh, that Roderick didn't know he was sitting on. Yes, there'll be some of uh, some of Roderick's old uh, uh, magical items down there. Not Roderick's. What? Not Roderick's. Oh no! Well, the well, that he was that he was unintentionally hoarding or holding for me. It's Roderick didn't do yep. magic. Roderick hated magic. Yes. That's part of why. That's, that's part of why if Roderick were alive right now, he'd be pissed to find out one. Oh, that Candor yes. put a secret basement underneath his house, and two, he used it to hide magical items. Yeah, he wouldn't be very happy about that. He but... would be seriously <laughs> pissed. And that's why he didn't need to know. Hmm. What Roderick didn't know didn't hurt him. No, that was something completely different to hurt him. <laughs> it was something he did know, which makes it ironic. Yeah, it's called alcohol poisoning. <laughs> well, we should probably start uh, out as soon as we can. Maybe we can find a cart when we're in town. Um, how are we looking on food? Do you? I still have some rations on me um, from that we had gotten from the school. But how are you guys on food? Uh, uh, I have five days of rations. My and tent is down the road. Cookie. You have a tent. The the pilgrimage is down the road by the de by the uh, shrine. Mm. Well, that could come in handy if we have a. Tent. Yes, you could all journey to the uh, the camp of the eight. Well, yeah. If you, guys, if you guys do plan on going there, have fun. Are they all like? And I'll kind of gesture at Kent. Varying degrees. Some are less devout and easier to understand. <laughs> Coming from you. I knew you'd say that. You always say that. It's always true. Well, I'm not going to argue with you on that. Good. Let's leave it there. So we got to uh, we got to get our days of rations, and then we got to get the uh, hot tail in it because we got two weeks of travel. Do is there get... any food in the house, or is it just... Uh, there is like, food in the house. Some of it won't be good. Some of it might be good. Cat Hump will probably eat whatever. I could check it out. I know it's good. You he's take a... good care of Kandor. He's, he's tired. He's a good-to-go okay? guy. He'll I'm going to take good up. care of Kandor. He'll get a good meal. I promise. Thank you. You're welcome. What about you? I want to help take care of you, too. Yeah, we'll, we'll do the best we can. Maybe I can fix you up okay. some travel food. Well, I think you all cool. need the food that you have here. But, but I want to help. You did help. You gave me the lemon cookie. Yeah, but I want to help more. You gave me the sugar lemons also. But I, I want to help more. You know what we could do? We could. There might be a recipe somewhere in here, and we can make a food for when they get back. <gasps> Good idea. How about that? That will give us time to make a big meal. Can we her. make a feast for when you get back? Ooh, that right. would be a good idea. I, I would be all for make that. Make sure to include some uh, buffalo cauliflower bites. If I'll try. Okay. I'll try to make some cauliflower. And then I don't. We gotta find the seeds. Or the. the I, I don't know how you grow cauliflower. Okay. I think it grows just like cabbage. Like cabbage? How do you grow cabbage? I don't grow. Plant a seed in the in the ground and it grows. What kind of seeds? Do you guys have the seeds? We don't I know don't. cauliflower seeds. Why have I not? That might be some. That Where might be in the back with the wheat, rest of the weeds, maybe. What about her? He points at Constog. She's like the foresty type. Doesn't she have the seeds? Uh, not on me. Those were with my. Oh, that's sad. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to talk about your sister. Nothing. Bad hope. I know it's sad that she died. 
Of course she I had cabbage seeds. Oh, she didn't die. Where is she? I feel she? like that should have been the answer. I'm just walking around with cabbage seeds. She's <laughs> in another country. Whoa! How did that happen? Well, I died. You and, died? Uh, then what are you doing here? Well, yeah. my friend put a necklace on me and I woke up here in her sister's body. Her oh my sister's god, body. jewelry is even more my scary body. than I thought. I thought, like, necklaces could strangle you. It turns out they can put you in another person's body? Some of Some them. Of them. <laughs> oh my god! Very, very, very rare. There's, uh, there's necklaces that can do a lot of things. Yeah, it always feels weird dying the first time, doesn't it? The first time? Well, she hasn't died before. Oh! But who, did you, what, 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 did you could die multiple times? I was always told you only die once. But you live twice. Usually. There's something called a singular. Sometimes you die more than once. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. I, I, this is starting to hurt Can my head. Candor can explain. I'm sure that won't hurt your head at all. I think there'd be a good time for you and Candor just to go off together and he can tell you about it while you think about feast plans. Okay, I, 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 could, I could do that. Where is this farm? This is supposed to be a farm, right? We're, yeah, this area right here is I, 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 I'm gonna go look around then. At the back, just don't don't eat anything until I get back there, please. Okay. I'll make sure it's all okay. right. In so mean. Wow. I just don't want you getting sick or anything. Okay, that, good point. There's, there's food in the house, though. You can eat some of that. Oh, that sounds good. I'll look for... I'll, well, first, let me go look at the garden. I'll check the garden. I don't know anything about how to garden, but I'll try. You'll do fine. I hope so. I didn't want... I want to make a big feast for when you come back. Thanks. What a guy. What a they. <laughs> and they'll wander around to the and, back uh, of the building. Do we have to wait for our hit points until we've... Um, no, you it? can roll your hit points now. So hit your hit die button at the top of your character sheet. Uh, wow. It's by product of the spell. Wow. Two eights and a... Yeah, those are all good rolls. Jeez. Are you other two taking half? Oh, no, they don't. You. They don't level because level yeah, up. James came in at five, and so too did Brianna. Uh, can we hit the rest button to reset? You our You can spell indeed hit the rest yet? button, and that will reset oh. your your spell points. Twenty three spell points. Yeah, that's what happens when you're just a caster and that's all you are. You get lots of spell points. <sighs> all right, well, are we ready to set out? I guess. Um, Kandor, you know there's one more warning you needed to inform them of. Um, it's that they they have to say that for the last four days, they've been at Harveston, that they were not at Mirashad for the last four days. So basically, from the time that they left the woods, from the time that they took out Doncho in Arena, they have to say that they came straight here. Oh, yes. Before you leave, um, I should probably warn you if anybody asks or comes up in any way, shape, or form, you guys have been here for the last four days. Ever since you guys took out Arena or Doncho, you came immediately here. Okay. I see. Yeah, it's timey wimey stuff. That way it doesn't. If people start to think that you were at Mirashad, then things get changed and it ripples out. And if, you're, if you were here, you don't have to worry about that. So if it comes up, just a minor detail. Well, hopefully it won't even come up, but if it does, then that'll be our story. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, Damn it. 
Anyways. What? Is Phelan... Is he gone? Uh, don't know exactly where he is at the moment, uh, what he's doing. I just... I knew something like, like that book would get to him eventually. Oh, you think he did this? He was... No, I don't think that if he did, it was anything intentional. I think that he's just uh, very susceptible to things like that sometimes. You weak-minded fool is Jedi mind trick. Exactly. Jedi mind trick. How do you name? Oh, yes, yes. That's how. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, we should get going. We have a long journey ahead of us. Oh, hey, long journey. So we'll try and get a cart and some rations in town? That yeah. was my idea. Well, there's not really a town. There's just the oh, no. the oh, camp gosh. of the eight. Oh, no, I was meaning in Fort Jericho. Oh, you got it. Well, yeah, when you, if you tra when you travel that way. But that's a long walk. Yes. So you would do the um, walk. Could, so if we don't have, so if not everybody has enough rations could we um hunt along the way i'm not really skilled at hunting but you can try to hunt along the way i'll kind of look at constog to kind of gauge i guess how she's feeling about that because i know that she didn't really want to kill the dire tiger i was we hunting could... for druids hunting is fine as long as you're hunting for meat hunting for sport or just randomly letting things die or killing things is not showing reverence for nature but if you've got to live um then you gotta live i mean you you try to kill and you try to use as much as you can from it when you kill it yeah you're not a president son you can't just go around hunting for sport like that nice we promise that we will we will oh, we will not hunt any stags that's it we could also forage Speaking uh, of which, is there anything that I know? Uh, is there anything that I know I'd be able to do within the next two weeks to about uh, the stag? Um. So give me a d twenty roll, real quick. All righty. Roll whatever the appropriate number is. Why do I always click the wrong thing? Uh, I always click the die thing. And yeah. Then it brings so the you will me. know that if she keeps her her heart. And her mind on the stag through her travels. A stag will find her, and a stag that remembers and knows who she is will find its way to her. Um, it always happens. It's just part of the way it works. Um, but you know it's especially that way for her. Um, when one stag leaves, a similar one finds its way to her, and eventually... Especially right about now, you think if if she's about where she would be. Oh, but you, guys... you have the power of heart. <laughs> if you believe in your heart and your mind, yes, a stag will come find you. So just keep that in your in your thoughts and prayers uh, on your uh, journey and share yeah, we'll with you. Sure. Right. So. You know, they always come find you. Be they stags or spirits, they always find you. Spirits? Sorry, different you. Oh, yes. Huh. So, all right. Well, let's uh, strong up what we have and. How far in the day are we? Um, yeah, so it is, uh, I think when we last left off, it was like uh, midday-ish, um, early to midday. So yeah, you can scrounge up what you can for travel rations from the <laughs> cabinets. Uh, you'll be able to gather about a day's worth of food from there, leaving off food for uh, Hadhup and Candor to survive for a little while. All right. While well, Hadhup tries to figure out gardening, and hopefully Kandor will be able to help him out with uh, the knowledge of it. Uh, yeah. And Kent just stays on the front lawn, just like visibly shaking and weeping as you, he watches you all walk in and out of that cabin. <laughs> I will bring Kent the dirty poetry book. Would you like a book from inside, Kent, to read? 
Is it? Is it the book of the Avatar? It's one of his favorites. On the cover, this book is written by someone by the name of Jericho Carbinger. Or no, not oh. Jericho. I'm sorry, not uh, wrong name. Um, God damn it! He wasn't much of an author. Uh, Theragage? What? Theragage Thornov. Yes, it should keep you uh, simulated during your travels. <laughs> Kent begins to, to thumb through it and go, huh, ah, never heard these teachings before. <laughs> I will have to study them. Huh. Huh. <laughs> okay, okay, that's enough. Uh. Well, if you like it, there's uh, more where that came from. Oh, please, no. <laughs> what a good choice of words. Sounds he, like pulls that out, he pulls out the other book and opens them both up simultaneously and starts comparing notes. <laughs> they are very different books. Very, very different books. Very there once was that. a gentleman from Mirashad <laughs> who... Never mind. <laughs> it's, oh, this book is entirely in limericks. Um... So the interior of the house, by the way, looks something like that. Ooh, that's fancy. There is taking off of there is an upper uh, an upper level uh, which has the uh, place to sleep and a few among a few other things. Uh, James, I hope yeah. I'm giving your character's humble abode uh, doing it justice. Should have had at least two bedrooms. They are both upstairs. Yep. I actually I have four designed upstairs. I don't know if that is too many or you think or. Uh no, because Roderick only had one son. Yeah, but I'm assuming maybe they had like a guest room and then a spare room that could be used. No, no hell no, no, no Roderick. Okay. Would never. I didn't mean guest like guest is in that that case, but. <laughs> but like, would he have ever expected maybe his son to bring someone home? Okay. No. All he, right. So it would have been. He told. Right he told Grimshaw to get the hell okay. out. He never wanted Grimshaw to okay, come back. So two rooms, got it. Okay. Whip. Are you ready to set out? We're ready to set out. All right, well, you all can wave goodbye to Kandor. I feel better, buddy. Side. Thanks. Candor. Kent straggles <laughs> along behind, Wait, like walking any, backwards down the road. Is there any way we can communicate with you, Candor, if we need to? Is there? You have not had a bottle in a long time. You don't have the sheets anymore. You basically have the nothing. Rings either? No, you definitely don't have the rings. There's two. In fact, I avidly avoid jewelry. There are two sets of them running around, though, and you don't know where either. Well, you know where one of them is, but you haven't figured out where the other one is. Actually, well, when she mentions that, I'm going to look at their fingers to see they, if they all have. Uh, they do not. Not matching. They do not all have rings. matching rings on. Okay, good. You don't have those. Yeah, we don't have them. That's good. No, unfortunately, they. Once you guys come across a bottle or a piece of paper, well, specific oh. bottles or pieces of paper. Well, that paper, we have a piece of paper, but it only, like, worked with Phelan. Here. I show it to Kendra. Can we change it so it's to you? Uh, is that something that's possible? Um, if you had spell points, perhaps. Um, well, not at the moment. But you do know, though, that you can take down some information from this with one of your cantrips. Um, so, and that you can manage to do. So you can cast a specific cantrip that will allow you to um, detect ID. Um, and then later on... Like a product ID? Huh? Like, like a, a product, product ID. ID. Um, I thought it would give you the ISB. Correct. Right? Sort of. <laughs> uh, actually, it's more like getting the serial number of the device. Uh, but you can you can basically take down the the serial number information, and then eventually, when you get enough of your spell points back, you can communicate with them via at least the spell method, which will turn a sheet of paper temporarily into a messaging device. 
Oh, so it'd be like, you, instead of being like a permanent item, it'd be something that'd be able to use. Correct. Once it, or... it, you okay. basically write something on the sheet of paper, you cast the spell on the sheet of paper, and then the sheet of paper dissolves, and it writes itself on a piece of, uh, a piece of Arcana Tech uh, note paper. Ah, yes, perfect. I will, uh, if I have anything to write with, I'll write down hey, the, Steve, uh, the number. Yes. Would it have been compatible with the stuff that Roderick and the gang would have had back then? Um... It is similar technology, yes. Because Roderick could still have had all of that. <gasps> Did he really kept it? I didn't think he would have kept it. Yes, he would have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He kept all his gear. He kept it in a okay. trunk. The arm. The armor was buried out back. Which so that works out because from. in here there is a a case that I assume that he'd have at least kept like his weapon and a few other things. Um, yeah. So Candor, give me a D twenty roll. Actually, oh, you actually. Uh, yeah. Do you want me to roll again? Because I'd be more than happy. To um. Well, I think actually everybody's everybody can kind of be looking around the house. So can I have everybody give me a perception? Uh, oh yes. no, no, Kent's not inside. Oh Kent yeah, I know, I know, Kent will not. <laughs> um, yeah. So Brianna and Constag, you are both looking around, and you both happen to stare at like notice in this in a container that there is a piece of paper that looks identical to the one that uh, that you guys have. Oh, uh, hey, look, it's, it's like, our wait, thing. do you guys have the bottles or the paper in, in that one? We had, um, it was like a box. We put the paper into. Okay. It. I know there's, there's so many iterations of this because there's different people who've made them, but they all interlink with each other because they're all using like basically the same spell. Yeah. We had to write on the paper and then put it okay. in the box. Like a mailbox system. Yeah, because we never yeah. got those uh, statues okay. made. So, uh, Man, statues. so yeah, so you find you'll find like a little box with a piece of paper inside of it that looks just like the paper you have. Oh, look at this! Look at this box. Oh, that's convenient. I didn't realize it was there. Uh, I'll see if I can. Uh, Use that. You have an ID now, um, so you'll have to you'll have to figure out how you make the assignment work. But you should be able to figure that out over a couple of days. Oh, perfect. Um, hmm. So I, I guess I don't need the paper per se to. to uh, nope. This this will this will give you okay. once you can get it synced up. This will give you a way to uh, to communicate with them. Perfect. I'll give them back. I'm their glad paper. I asked. Thank you. That was a Real smart question, money. Nikolai. Um. Nikolai, you're right. With that question, actually, let me step away for just a moment. Uh oh, they both got a I'm not pausing, by the way. Just stepping away. Uh oh. Okay. Because I just realized that uh, Roderick's character sheet should still be here. Oh my god. I try to hold on to character sheets. Oh my god. All right, so uh, the armor is not here, though, right? The armor is outside. It was planted, he yeah. Yeah, he would have buried yeah. the armor. Because the fo the forest would have grown up from the armor. There's so much stuff on here. The plate and the and the actual metal portion he gave to Gra he gave I to loved Gra it of the things I remembered from your character sheet. I did I, re I totally remembered you had that book of erotic poetry oh, yeah. that you kept carrying around. <laughs> That's the important I don't remember thing I remember. where I I swiped it from someplace too. Um what was the the t-shirt? I saw the and then I can't read it properly. Oh the t-shirt. The Oh my dot, god. The Why oh, can't I remember that? this? Shit. I remember it, but I don't remember what it does. I just remember it being a thing. No, we got the t-shirts after we did the, after we finished the mission. Yeah, I just can't remember what they were. After we finished the campaign, the t-shirts, the big bag, the, the, the allowance and the piece of land. No, this there was a different one. This was the was this you guys visited the um, the dwarves in Akunsa, right? Oh yeah, oh, I yeah, saw yeah, the yeah, dwarves. Yeah, There's yeah, a shirt yeah, that yeah. says "I yes. saw the dwarves." Yes, yes, yes. He does have that. <laughs> so yeah, there is a shirt that says "I saw the dwarves." There, I'm looking for anything that might be of like interest here. 
I can't remember what's on there. It's been 10 yep. years. Um, man, the, In my hand, this really is the character hand? sheet, though, of somebody who did not like uh, magical items. <laughs> Brianna's sad when she sees a t-shirt saying, I saw the dwarves because it makes her think of Gulron. Yeah, but that's it. There's there's the, there's a there's a long sword and a dagger in there and a buckler, um, and a handful of other things. But the only other thing that stands out is the T-shirt that says "I saw the dwarves." Yeah. And some pieces of and uh, and some locks of hair. Um. Oh, that was Amy's. No, that was the nymph. Oh my god, I forgot about her! Oh lord. Rabal the tales of adventuring tonight on uh, Mershaw. Oh, I completely forgot about that. And a small bronze medallion. Oh, there is actually one other piece of magical item. The bronze medallion was the piece. one of the yep, pieces. That's right. The ones was a nip from Chris Eisen. There is a, there is a cloak uh, that's in there as well. I think actually that's probably on, that would probably be on the couch. Um, and that would be something that Amy would have snuggled up with a lot. Um, but there is, there is a piece of cloth on the, on the, on the couch that is always very warm. Oh my God. Yeah. I forgot about that too. The only piece of magical gear you yep. would use. So with my perception, do I? See yeah, you can you can or... notice it. You can notice that like there is heat that seems to be coming off the couch as you're kind of looking around at stuff. Why is this couch warm? What? Have you... you weren't inside, right, Candor? You weren't like sitting on the couch or on the this blanket or. I mean, not recently. No. I I. I... No, my body does not leave heat signatures that long. <laughs> Um, I'll just kind of get it. I'll just grab it and then I'll just kind of like put it on real, put it on a real yeah, quick. Yeah, it is. It's nice and warm. You feel like you're like in a, in like a toasty, like warm blanket that's heated. Oh, this is nice. Comes in handy, especially in the winters. Should we take this with us? Or I don't want to be disrespectful and like loot the things here. I mean... Um, is any of this stuff that stuff that I'd be willing to part with it then? I mean, you don't, of, it, yeah. it might get really cold here, so you might kind of want the Cloak of Warmth. Yeah, I was thinking I'd probably keep that, that here, but uh, I didn't know if there was any of the, any of these the, things. The rest of it's all basically mundane, so. And I mean, there he's dead, most of the family is dead. There's now probably one, maybe two of them. You still never figured out uh, whether or not... Uh, the second of the three Harvest Boys is still alive. You know the third one is, but guys... I'll uh, go and uh, put the uh, cloak back in the, on the couch. Uh, if you want any of the mundane stuff, you guys are more than welcome to take one or two of them. Oh, we'll be okay, I think. Um... It wasn't much for magic. Yeah, I I can understand that. Um, all right. Well, at least we have a way to communicate. Indeed, indeed. Actually, hmm. uh, you said that, uh, like, what, was, what exactly was in the, the thing again? You said it was a piece of the. No, that piece is not there. Oh, the the medallion. medallion's not in there. That was a okay. misspeak. Just the, the the things that would be of note are the I saw the dwarves T-shirt, uh, the locks of hair, um, the master uh, buckler, uh, the. Dagger, the long sword. Um, that's it. Maybe his old traveler's outfit might be in there. Um, I'm gonna take the. <laughs> I'm gonna 50 take year the, old I, clothes. You want 50 year old clothes? <laughs> I'm gonna take the uh, I saw the dwarf shirt and then kind of uh, put it up to uh, Kent uh, and touch him with it to see if anything happens. Ooh. 
with uh, uh, ulterior motives, but without mentioning them ahead give of time. Me, give me a d20 uh, check. Uh, uh, Just roll uh, me up a d20. Uh, uh, Oops, went to the character sheet. Kent is now visibly weak. Actually, low is what you wanted. Um, the okay, shirt good. shrinks in size. <laughs> Upon, upon touching? touching him. And you feel like a weird, like, you know, the, the kind of like static electricity thing that, that you that you might feel. But in this case, it's a little bit different, but it like resizes to fit him. Like when you get static electricity on something and it just clings to you extra mm -hmm. tight. Well, you feel free to have that if you like. <sighs> he begins rubbing it on his face. He's like, this, this. This was the avatars. Oh. You don't need to bury that one and uh, water it either. Well, you might need to water it if you're watching oh. it, but you don't need to bury it. Oh. Oh. I don't oh. think he'll ever wash it. Oh. It's uh, with his tears. Yes. Good stuff there. Oh. So anyway. <laughs> Let's yeah, keep going. Probably a good idea. Yeah, I, I'm kind of worried Kent won't make it. I feel like we should just mute him. Is that an option? <laughs> What is what travel? is a mute? What what to quiet him? Oh, but, but how? Him. I don't know. The weeping is just a little distracting. I mean, you can still silently weep. He still would. It still would be kind of distracting. I mean, it's more of a gentle weep. It sounds like. Sounds like uh, an erotic uh, weep. Sure. Here, so I don't know. <laughs> and he has that shirt. To gentle wipe away weep. His that tears. Was the exact word I would use. Gentle weep. The exact same weep he read when, or had when he read the book. All right. Well, let's get going. All right, yeah, man. let's. Uh, I'll kind of nudge Erasmus. You want to pray to that shrine before we leave? No, I don't even want to walk by that <laughs> shrine. I'll I'll try to contact you as soon as I figure out the uh, magics with the uh, bottle and all of that. Now that I have the number, the ID number, and everything, so sometime within the next week or so. Get the bin. Yeah. Yes, the VIN number. Right. Should I catch the VIN number of that book or that paper? Yeah. yeah. I think it's stolen. <laughs> this, uh... Yeah, I the address. So yeah, you guys have to go by the shrine in order to get to uh, the campsite of the uh, of the eight. I will of pause the and then pray at the shrine. Okay. Uh, give me a percentile die roll. Yeah, yeah, a knowledge religion and a percentile roll. Okay. I will uh, I'm keep myself about twenty feet away from him. I'm praying. gonna, I'm gonna start with the knowledge religion. All right, yep, that's how you should. Uh, very good. Now give me a, give me a D one hundred roll. A D one hundred. Yep. Where's the die one? There it is. We get another freaking scorpion. Ooh, yeah, you no. get a blessing. The eight. One moment. Because the eight will provide. Let's see what blessing you get. Oh Lord. It's fine. There are much worse things I could have done. It's a giant scorpion, but this time it fights with us. Um uh, you will have a the effect of a cat's grace that will last on you for the next 24 hours. And we're just going to be walking out in the wilderness. Well, no, you, he, you are going to the uh, the campsite of the Pilgrims of the E. A most holy site. Filled with true believers. Figured that'd be right up your alley, Charles. Lots of true believers. Lots of true believers in the eight. Um, yeah, so let's travel away, shall we? Give me a pause. Yeah, we can take a short break. Um, so the five of you make your way to the campsite the of the Pilgrims of the Eight. Oh, Lord. And the as you guys start closing in on it, you can see the tents in the distance. You can see some 
clothes, some carts, some other items. The one thing you don't see as you get in close is the people. There are no people well, at this site. Crazy. That's I start crazy. running from I start running from tent to tent looking for people. Yeah, you start running up to the tents. There is no one in any of the tents. There is no sign of uh. any person here. Uh, Brianna, with a with a perception that high, the first thing you'll notice is that not only are there not people, but there are no bodies. And there are things laid out, like, not even like people left in a hurry, just like people disappeared. There's like huh. things like getting ready to be cooked, um, that, are, that are like sitting out and waiting. Um, there's like uh, toys and other things, or and like or other like trinkets, games that are like unfinished. Um, oh, that's just horrible. all these things kind, kind of monster? laying about, strewn about. Um, I will point that out to everybody. Like, look, this, it just looks like they just kind of disappeared in the middle of whatever they were doing. So many things come racing to Erasmus's mind. <laughs> they didn't say any of them. Are they all invisible? We all stare at Kent to, to confirm if this is in fact something that would happen. This has never happened before. This camp okay. is usually full of people. Huh. Maybe they're here, but we can't see them. That would be an odd thing, but not unexpected. I mean, it's odd that there would be no people here too. What does the book say about it, Kent? Which one? The you know. Dirty. The new <laughs> the book? book? Do you want me to look up the new book? The book with all the answers. Yeah, so definitely the Limerick book. <laughs> the once was a campsite from the for the eight. Some people, never mind. Some people there got eight? No, I, I, I actually had a way I was going, and I realized it was going too far, way too fast. <laughs> Something rhyming with eight. Uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look in the book. Okay. You can check the and... book. The book has only one thing to tell you. You had to be found. That is literally what, the, what? what it reads. You had to be found. I read that out loud like several times in a row. Found with a B. Found, found with an F. F. Found. You had to be. You had Y O U. Y O U H A D T O B E F O U N D. No spaces. Wow. <laughs> and lacking punctuation. It's a crime. We trust this book. Oh. No. Out of character, no, but in character, Brianna's like... The book has interesting perspectives and answers. Sure, this yeah, is an answer. Is that, is that answer. what we're calling that? Interesting perspectives and answers? Yes. <sighs> um, the eight will provide. We will find them. I guess let's look around a little bit. We'll do some investigating. Can we do some active perception? Yep, that is, I, there's actually a skill called investigation or perception. Investigation, though, is sort of like going through clues. Um, whereas perception is trying to find the clues. Um, oh, I don't but there, are, with Brianna's precept, perception of 31, there is not really anything to be found except for the the absurdity that is what is here. I mean, it is, it's literally like somebody, somebody was, had snatched away people in the middle of doing something over and over and over again. Huh. Like, is there anything that gives us a sense of time about when people were last here? Like you said, there's stuff cooking, There's right? no, weirdly, there is, ooh, actually, that's a good point. Um, there is nothing that's actually in the process of being cooked. There was stuff getting ready to be cooked. Um, but none of it has rotted. 
Um, not quite yet, but... Does it look like super dry? So, yeah, it's, it is quite dried out, though, some of the stuff that's laying around. Um, there's a very thin layer of dust on things, but not a not a very, you know, not a layer, not a thick layer, nothing that makes it so that it's obvious it's been a long time. Um, so are there, is there like a place where a fire would be? Is it died down? Um, cold? There's, there's like... the fire would be, any fire here, any fires that would have been here are cold. How about, like, there's no animals. There are no animals. Here's my dice! I come walking out of a tent. <laughs> what do you make of all this, Kent? They left. They're gone. The ape moved them elsewhere. So there are carts, but no horses. So that wouldn't there really are carts, but no horses. Now, if we only knew the spell for horsepower. <laughs> You've been working so hard at it. I'll find it. <laughs> I cast a spell of horsepower. If I could just find a way to substitute the locomotion that the horse has provided. It's just too bad these carts don't pull themselves. Should we check, see if they do? I can assure you they don't. Yeah, based on based on the teachings of of uh, of Roderick. How do how do the map followers of the eight feel about magic? At least the the pilgrims of the eight. How do they feel about magic? How do they feel about magic? The pilgrims of the eight would use magic as it came to them because they are not followers of Roderick. Okay. They are followers of the eight, and the eight may or may not provide okay. magic. So Roderick, being annoyed by magic from time to time, wouldn't stop them from from still using magic. Okay. No. Because they, they understood that while Roderick may have been the avatar, that Roderick did not believe in the eight. Okay. Is there any food that looks like it's like in good enough condition that we might want to take with since we don't know if they're coming? There out? are rations that are lying about the area. Uh, in different places, there are some backup rations that people are holding on to. Uh, well, I would suggest whoever needs rations before we get to Jericho, take uh, take a little bit. Um, perhaps we should take one of these tents with us so that we can, like when we make camp, we can um, have a tent. That sounds good. Um, My tent would have been a family size one, so do not take a nap. <laughs> But there are also bedrolls have... here if you wanted bedrolls. I have a bedroll currently for myself and Erasmus. Let's see if there's any other things of note here that you guys are looking around. What about the corpse of Amy Harveston? No, she's not here. She would have been by the yep. house. Hmm. Oh yeah, that's right. Not uh, not in the camp. The camp's technically not in Harveston. Yeah, the camp is out way is quite a ways outside of Harveston. It's just really close to the shrine. And the shrine would be on the edge of the yep. property. Um, so yeah, some stuff you can find lying about, uh, is a potion, which you'll be able to tell is in large person. One that you'll be able to tell is jump. One that you'll be able to tell is stabilize. Um, there is a potion of cat's grace lying around. Huh. Um, just things that people left behind. Maybe on a shelf somewhere, in a in a container somewhere, um, a potion of, of hide from animals, 
Y'all think we should take these? Because if so, we need to inventory them. Uh, yeah, I think we should take them. So potions, enlarge person, hide from animals. Jump. Okay. Uh, cure light wounds. Ooh. Protection from good. Um, there is a second potion. Oh no, yeah, a second potion of cure light wounds. A potion of vanish. 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 Oh, vanish. vanish with a V. I don't know what is wrong with me nice. that I can't say V's and B's properly. Um, another potion of cure light wounds. Um, a, another potion of or a potion of pass without trace. There is also a Masterwork Heavy Steel Shield, um, a Masterwork Great Sword, a Masterwork Short Sword, a Heavy Flail, some Masterwork Chainmail, a Masterwork Short Spear. Uh, uh, a scroll. Yeah, I was just going to say, is any of that stuff um, you got y'all can use? There's also a scroll of web. I'll take the scroll okay. of web. Anybody want any of the other potions? Otherwise, I can hang on to them for now. Yeah, why don't you do that? Uh, anybody want any of the equipment? Not sure that I can use any of that. Not sure I can actually carry any of that. <laughs> I can look at it though. I will take a bed roll okay. though. There are enough rations here for each of you for five days travel. Nice. Um, I will let my portion of those be um, like distributed along the group because I have like 20 okay. in my inventory no right now. So that should be plenty for me. So I guess to put it simply, there are 25 rations here. Wow. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of rations. Not a lot of people at the campsite. Yeah. 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 yeah it has provided. Well, hopefully we'll find uh, your group there, Kent. They're pilgrims. Pilgrims move around. Without their stuff? D8 will provide. I left without my stuff. <laughs> um, I will ask Nikolai if he can uh, carry a tent or... Um, should we even, you know, I don't know. I I sure. think a tent would be a good idea, but... I'm happy to carry a tent. Yeah, we certainly uh, got some stuff here. I almost feel, you know, guilty. You, you're certain they can't all be dead. There'd be something left behind if they were dead. Yeah, there would be. Yeah. Perhaps the eight did provide. Maybe all you need is Maybe eight. they became the undead and they're the ones attacking the Arshad. There were far too few of them to for that have been the case to had to have been the case. You only see a handful of tents here. There were thousands of undead. Hmm. 
Well, we're, uh, we've done some investigating. We've gathered some equipment. Unless somebody can think of anything else. Nobody has any... Never mind. I was just about to say, does anybody have any of the occult object reading? We don't. <laughs> um, so... Uh, unless there are no further thoughts, I'm going to assume the eight will provide and we'll just kind of haphazardly, randomly bump into okay. How much does the tent weigh? Like 10 pounds? Uh, tent is one sec. Oh. Depends on the size, right? Yeah. Um, there are, an, you can get basically any size of tent. A small tent weighs 20 pounds, a medium tent weighs 30 pounds, and a large tent weighs 40 pounds. Okay, I'm going to take the large. Okay. Well, then take mine. Because my tent would have been a family tent, so it would have been a large tent. Okay. That way we're not disturbing anybody in case they come back. Um, I think I want the Masterwork short sword okay. as well. So I'm just going to put it on my character sheet yep. for now, but I can figure out like the stuff to put on there That's later. That's fine. Okay. Ready to be done with this ominous music. Music's great. So calm and peaceful. Mm. Do we find any booze? Uh, yeah, you can find some booze. There's a little bit here and there, but not much. Interesting. That's usually the thing people make sure to take with them. Yep. Um, is there any sort of, like, anybody keep a journal or anything that Ooh, might give us an idea of the last time? Now that you're there? looking around, that's the other thing you see is not anywhere to be found. Anything with written entries that isn't of a magical variety is nowhere to be found. Nor are there any spell books. So Wait, I somebody will... did a thorough job, huh? Yeah, I'll point that out. No writing implements? Oh, there are writing implements around. There are pieces of paper around. But no, it's, it's as if nobody set down a book uh, with any like historical record, it's as if nobody left a spell book on a shelf. In fact, there's no books at all here. Well, that's very odd. I guess we shouldn't wait around here too long. Um, if you guys are okay pressing forward for now here yeah i i mean this is eerily calm okay you ready to continue your journey with some supplies and some time we got some supplies we investigated something yeah. i'm making some notes in my journal about the campsite so that I can think about it later on. Okay. See if anything comes to me. All right, so the party can begin. It travels into the wilderness on their way to Fort Jericho. A Bronx. Um, so this is gonna function much like something that you're all used to. Uh, I need some traveling checks. Traveling checks! Yeah, we're gonna fail. No, that's not good. There's some survival. What else do you need on a travel check? Ooh, knowledge geography is a good thing, too. I was hoping you'd forget that one. I've played enough of her to forget. Um, yeah. But there's something the there's something else. One more thing that needs to happen. There we uh -oh. go. Now you got the whole slew of them. All right. Let me make some rolls here and see what happens. 
Now, for the record, for the record, you're all in some plainsy wilderness here. Which means triple the chance of dire tigers. Um, holy shit. This game likes you guys. I don't like that this game likes you guys. This game likes us. Remind me how two of us have already died in I it? mean, you've also, you're also about to see something that I never thought players would get to. I guess they've seen it once. This has been seen once before in another campaign. Um, in fact, it'll be... Tarasks? It'll be a little funny to at least one of you. This and this. Um, so, uh, Kent, with your impeccable perception, um, you will spot off in the distance grazing in the. Oh, let me get some different music going. This is really not the right music for, for this. Off in the distance, you will see, you will spot uh, an incredible sight. There are grazing upon the grass, landed out in the fields, four Pegasus. Oh, wow. Nice. Horses with wings. Horses with wings. Well, let's not go murdering Pegasi. them. Pegasus. Be great party divider. <laughs> I'm gonna look for their cutie marks. <laughs> no. No. Bad Charles. Bad Charles, no biscuit. <laughs> um. What do we know about Pegasi? So Pegasi are magical creatures uh they are often good in nature um and they have the ability to see whether someone themselves is good inherently or bad inherently um they can fly and they move very quickly could they help transport us to for jericho uh, if you could find a way to interact with them perhaps but they tend what to be rather wild um, and yeah, they cannot but... speak themselves. Mm. Only you had something that had some ability to... To speak with animals. Or commune with nature in some other way. I feel like there's a, there's a person here whose class would really be good for dealing with... the thing with is... I just want to say... Oh, I'm sorry. No, go, go ahead. ahead. I was gonna say, I think Brianna with that check, her her thought is pretty horse with wings go flat flap. <laughs> yeah. I just go like, how do they keep the hats on their head? I'm done, Steve. I'm just gonna keep doing my little pony references. So Constag, how are you feeling here? Should be overtaken by the majesty. Beautiful. These could really change where you're at as well. Yeah, if only I had... If only you were a that. druid and you had some sort of innate power that comes from your druid class that gives you the ability to communicate with wild creatures. Wild empathy. Is that not on the sheet? Did you trade it away for some other ability? No, it's not traded away that I can see. Um... Is it's there a level plus con ca charisma, isn't it? Did I just forget to put it? It on does the look sheet? that way, unless there is something I'm missing. But uh, do you have two different? I don't think you have two different. Uh, no, you just all you got on your sheet right now is your archetype stuff. You have none of your stuff from your class at all on your sheet except oh. tricolor stuff. Um. In Oops. fact, yeah. Um, so you can give me a wild empathy check. The DC, uh, you, it is your, you'll need to go to the druid, uh, sheet on the thing. 
and wild empathy is I don't I'm actually wondering if this works at this level on magical beasts. It is a minus four yep. for magical beasts with a score of one or two. Um, so yeah, you actually will not, you can't use this on them anyway, but it doesn't matter. Uh, they have higher than a one or a two intel. Oh. Straight up, uh, diplomacy or animal handling, though. You should have those, right? I have handled animal, animal handling does not work on magical beasts. Oh, never mind. Um, but they will look up and they will also spot the five of you. I attempt to communicate with them with the tips I learned from the Talking to Stags <laughs> book I found at the library. <laughs> um, they're not running away, though, as they see you. Uh, maybe like uh, some sugar or carrots or whatever it is horses eat? Oats? Well, I'm assuming they have wings, so they'd eat seeds, too. Sounds good to me, yeah. They just kind of watch you carefully, the four of them, standing there. There are four of them, and there are five of us. One of us is little, though. That's true. Who's little? Kent is a halfling. Oh, um. Um, if I try to slowly approach them, um, do they just they stay keep there watching or? you? Do you have any How kind close of? Will you try to get? And, and this is an actual question. Uh, do you have any kind of like soothing song or something you could play to be like inspire friendship or anything? Um, it's been a very long time since I. Or to fun, so. enhance your competency in. I do have a. I do have inspire competence. So, is there any? So, is there anything that, say, Constog or one of us can roll to try and, you know? I'm letting leaving this up to you guys. Constog will tell you that they are intelligent, so she knows that they that she can't use her wild ability on them. They're not simple animals. Um, these are more like people, just without speech. Can somebody draw? They have hooves. They can't draw. They can't speak, but they can understand speech. Oh, I didn't realize yep. that part. I would Do say we know what language they can understand? Common. I would uh, say to them... Um, so first, I think I'm going to begin a performance of Inspired Competence. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess I would be sort of singing this to them. Um, and basically saying, you know, uh, we we come in peace. We wonder if you could help us uh, get to where we need to go, possibly. Ooh. Uh, let me double check this. They give you the Pegasus equivalent of F no. They flip you. They flip off the middle hoof. <laughs> the middle hoof. Which one's the middle? I don't know. I lived in a tower. You're the droid. You explain it. They will move forward towards you. Uh, get within about 60 feet of where you're standing. And they will stare at you very carefully. And then one of them will sort of trot forward very slowly. And it will lower its head to you. We should all be struck by how beautiful this scene is. You know what I mean? I mean, this would be a, a majestic scene. So um, I will uh, very, like, slowly, but kind of like showing I'm not meaning harm. I'll just try and, like, um, gently, like, stroke its mane. It will lean into your hand as you stroke. And it will let out a soft... 
I will I will actually be like, oh, you're very soft. Um. I I will say, is it okay if my friends approach? Um. It will start to trot a little ways towards them and then turn and look to you. And then wait. And it'll, like, move its awesome. head. Uh, so I will... I'll say, come here, guys. They're, they're really friendly. It shakes its head no, no. and it, it no, waves no. its head at you. And it starts, like, okay. plotting its feet. Okay, so I will There you go. It. Um, so it will move to be within about 60 feet of the party. Um, the whole party is good aligned. Am I correct on this? Yes. Um, that would be... Where's my alignment? I wrote it on there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it will approach and it will again lower its, uh, its head um, to you. And then it will look to the others. And it will like lower its head to them, and they'll start trotting over as well. Huh. Well, this is going way better than I anticipated. I want to pet one if it comes close. Yeah, you can come up and and pet it softly. Oh, nice! And it will kind of nuzzle in a little bit. I will move in very carefully to uh, to uh, pet a Pegasus. It will allow you to. Are 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 we gonna get on these? I. Um. So Constag, you'll know that it's very uncomfortable to ride one of these without a saddle. Of some sort. Hmm. Um, you can though. You definitely can. It will just feel very uncomfortable. And you can't just put on any old saddle. You would need a very special saddle for this. And yeah, just say you'll need a because of the wings. They don't come wearing. Them, nope, huh? they are not pre-saddled wild pegasi. How convenient. They don't happen to have a saddle on them. Does Constog share that information with yeah. us? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, I would say, well, it may be uncomfortable, and it would be up to them, of course, you know, if they're okay with it. Uh, here, I want Constog to give me a wild empathy check. Just a d20 plus your character level plus your forget if it's charisma or wisdom modifier I think it's charisma I feel like it is but it, uh, there's also a case for it to have been wisdom because it's a wisdom based class nope it's charisma so yeah d20 plus your level plus your charisma Ooh. Um, yeah, so you'll, like, kind of, like, uh, make some motions uh, with your hands and uh, point to the sky and then, like, gesture, uh, like, kind of a journey motion. Um, and they'll, like, make some motions back. They'll look at the sky and then they'll look at you and then they'll kind of lower themselves down. I will very carefully get on. So who's doubling up? Who's uh, who's light? Uh, I would suggest perhaps Kent ride with me because I'm small and getting smaller. Okay. Can you handle that, Kent? I'm going to need some help up here. I don't want to step on a wing. I will, I will... help the small people in get up. <laughs> Um, yeah, and these things fly at four times your normal movement speed. Ooh, so nice. It's going to cut your travel down by a lot. 
Um, so the only thing we really need to worry about are the night encounters, because they will not fly you through the evening. Um, you'll know that the, they will likely not fight for you. Um, so if any threat comes upon them, Constog, you're fairly certain that they will leave um, to avoid being uh, killed. Because um, they're not particularly strong creatures. Uh, they have a little bit of toughness to them, but not really enough to get themselves in any sort of real tussle. Um... But what you will start to notice, Constog, as you're riding this, is familiar feelings in this. Something comfortable, something, something the opposite of foreign, something familiar. Thing? Is she gonna get to have a Pegasus now? Oh my! That'd be amazing. Um, but yeah, uh, you guys fly through the rest of the day, miles and miles and miles through the sky. Um, That's awesome. eventually as evening approaches, they will slowly lower you down back into the plains. Um, and you can all set up camp. And before we uh, do any of that, let's take a short break so I can set up your campsite. And when we get back, we'll see how things go. See you shortly. The party finds themselves at their campsite that they've set up for the evening. Pegasus, the Pegasi, resting as well in the area. Um, can everyone see? Yes. I open my eyes. Um, I can't see. I can't see. I got my eyes closed, right? Isn't that one of the curly multiplier jokes? for Erasmus? No, 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 no. Uh, uh, yeah, but what are your sleep plans? Everybody's just going to sleep, and no, we always keep watch. Let's Same set up our usual order watch. As normal. I'm in the middle. Why? I want to eat the party overnight. I know. No, not again. Um, I'll be probably early evening. Okay. Nothing tastier than a party. So one or two, whichever. Okay. Yeah. First watch, I think, second watch. I think I am the second from last watch. Okay. We had a static watch thing, but I didn't write it down. Yeah, we should have done that. Yeah, well, the other thing is that there was a member that would not do watch, so we had to, we had issues there. Oh yeah, so many issues. We needed tissues. Well, who is up on the third watch? Me. All right, I will need you to give me a perception check through the evening. Of course. Always Nikolai, man. Nikolai is our trap detector, not on Ooh. purpose. Yeah, which is not a good idea because my perception <laughs> sucks. Um, so, yeah, let's see how well this thing moves towards you. Oh, Lord. It's a dire liger. Yeah, so Nikolai, you're keeping an eye out for things. Let me move everybody into the tent here. Leaping. So Nikolai should actually be out here. These are probably like around this area. Um, but you, Steve's. you will notice as you are watching something kind of move at just the very edge of your vision. Find this real quick. Such a pretty thing. You'll like it, I promise. Oh! Fucking scorpion, really. Yeah, and it just kind of starts moving in very slowly. 
Uh, let me have you roll initiative. Do we all roll initiative and nope. try to wake up her? Okay. Hey, buddy. Yeah. When she kill it, Nikolai. If she yeah. attempts to wake you up, you can uh, roll in and start on the next round of the initiative. Oh, you're smelly. He's sick, uh, buddy. Yeah. We'll roll in and. We're rolling for combat, no, y'all. Ja, the only person who should have rolled, so I'm going to take Kent out of the initiative. The only person who should have rolled right now is Nikolai and the Pegasi. Because they are <sighs> all that's awake the right now. Not a good initiative, huh? Pegasi. No, they, I just added them in. I'm rolling them this way because I forgot oh, okay. I actually have that the initiative button that would have put them oh, on there yeah, automatically. Oh, that's, that's much better. All right, so the Pegasi will go first. Um... They will kind of move over to here. They don't have the same sleeping schedule as the rest of you. The scorpion will go. The scorpion will move in. How far can it move? Oh, let me pull back the scorpion real quick. Yeah, the scorpion has plenty of movement. So the scorpion's going to move in here on Nikolai. And it's going to. What the It's going to take its reach attack on Nikolai. With its stinger. Nikolai, does a 26 hit? Man, I rolled high. Oh, man. Of course it does. I rolled super high there. Give me a fort save, Nikolai. And take eight points of damage. Ooh, you saved just fine. I, so, I should say just barely. Wow. A lot higher than I thought it was. Um, That will take us to Nikolai. Nikolai, what do you want to do? First, we want to yell, everybody, there's a scorpion, wake up. Okay. Um, um, so yeah, at the end of the round, so once Nikolai finishes up, everybody can roll in. Sorry, what attack did Well, everybody will give me per perception checks, I should say. Uh, it, it, shot, it, it shot its stinger at you and got you in the shoulder. Okay, so I need to move closer to yep. attack it. You just need to step in. I'm gonna step in. I'm gonna add a current round time around here. Attack with a spell. Does the 14 hit? Um, a 14 does in fact hit because it charged you. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. You slash across its uh uh its pincer. Uh, oh, I forgot to say which spell I was going to use. Okay, I'll need to do that next time. Um, yeah, and then perception checks from everyone, please. All right. I'm to be a Viking. I hope I can sleep through this combat as well. Nope, all of you will wake up. Hey. Uh, so all of you can roll into initiative. All right. Uh, can't you'll re need to re-roll again? Because uh, oh, I got ready sorry. rolled one. Um, we should all have a temporary plus four to dex from the cat's grave. Uh, that was to no, that was not supposed to be for everybody. That was just for the person who prayed at the altar. Oh, just, just for Kent. Okay. That is the. Yeah, I wasn't even in. The, I wasn't even near the altar. All right, had, uh, Erasmus, you're up first. Okay, uh... Wow. You are laying down in the tent? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm gonna get up and see what's going on outside. So does that... I'm sorry, Steve. Does that plus four apply to my... It would. Uh, your dex would initiative. be... Your initiative would be too higher. So I will move you above Constog. It's plus four. Cat's Grace Right, plus, plus four, four to your dex. That will increase your initiative by two. Because uh -huh. it's increasing your modifier by two. Yeah, okay, never, yeah okay. never mind. I got it. Okay, so uh, I'm getting up, get my punk self up, walking outside. Yeah, you come out the wrong part of the tent, and but you can still see the scorpion, I think. Can you okay. see it from the light? No, you come out the wrong side of the tent. You come out the side you came out. Which is the correct side of the... Which is you the can come out part? any side of the tent. 
Okay, all right, then I'll just go it's with the one. It's a family size tent. Nice. So where, how far could I move? Uh, do you see where right the, the scorpion is? Or? I initially had moved myself to right. here. So. The white things are Pegasi. Yeah, that, that part okay. I got. I was trying to check my line of sight thingy. To see if I had the line of, ah! I don't think I can actually. I don't think I moved out far enough. Okay. Uh, all I see are the Pegasus. Yep. Uh, There's something going on. The, are the Pegasus the pe Yeah, they're moving a bit away. The Pegasus are freaking out. Brianna. I can't see anything. Uh, I will stand up and I will begin my performance. Okay. Uh, the scorpion will go again. Damn. And it will it will take its full round of attacks on Nikolai. Some claws. 21 to hit with a claw. Yep. Uh, for... Ooh, wow. 10 points of damage. Max damage. Yep. And... Down uh, versus CM uh, tries to grab him with his claw. 20 or 24 versus your CMD. I'm sure. It scoops you up in its claw. Wait, you said 24, 24 versus your CMD. Damn, yeah, it's okay. 19. Wow. Uh, and then it will try to sting you again. You're I am upset, rolling Steve? so high. Uh, yeah, 24. We, we knew that was going to be coming next. To hit. 24. Yeah. No, no, that's to hit. Oh, wait. Oh. Of course oh. that hits. Come on, just get 10 damage. points of damage, another yeah. max damage roll, and another fort save. Kind of fucking kill me again. <laughs> I wonder what the couch feels like tonight. <laughs> no, okay. Yeah, right? Oh, sorry. I have my caster sheet open to another thing. All right, Kent. Um, I'm going to step out the other side of the okay. tent. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. And then I am going to 5, 10, 15. Okay, it's close enough. I am going to summon a horse 20 feet over the, uh, or 10 feet over the um, scorpion's head. <laughs> you sure you're not another dolphin? Poor boys. No, not the dolphin this time. People would abuse that so much that they retconned it in second ed so that you could not summon mount over people. Did they? We would all do it so often. Checking something here. <laughs> if it's legal. Because if it's not, it's not going to be a horse. It's going to be a um, porcupine. It's going to be a scorpion. Yeah, this came up last time, and I was pretty sure there is a there is a ruling that says you can't just summon them on top of things. Um, oh, I'm standing on him. I want to drop it down. Well, if you're summoning it 20 feet above him. Also, it's, first of all, so the first thing you need to think of is the range is close. So you would have, we have to think about, like, uh, mathematics here. So if it's 25 feet away now, right? So then we, or 30 feet yep. away now. So you need you would need to draw a. Uh, Is it thirty? Yeah, it's thirty feet away, and you would have to draw yourself a nice little uh, rectangle, Five, right 10, triangle. 15, oh, okay, I miscounted. Uh, okay, never mind, I miscounted. But yeah, I'm you're I'm not I don't want to do the whole dropping them on them because it also doesn't deal a lot of damage. Dropping objects on okay. people is not as is not as powerful. Then as I'm just things. gonna then I'm just gonna magic missile okay. attack. Rock and roll. Uh, yeah, that's some good magic missile damage. Wrong side of the tent. Oi. Constog. Uh, I'm going to get up and also uh, exit the tent. Okay. Oh, it's going super slow. Yep. The lighting engine is a bit rough. Uh, Nikolai. 
How do I try and get out of the grapple? Whatever. Uh, CMB versus it. CMD. Oh shit, my CMB sucks. Um, that will almost be enough. Uh, actually, that will be enough because you have Brianna's uh, bardic music. You hey. you like shake yourself free of the grapple and it drops you to the uh, to the ground. And can I still now attack it? Uh, nope. That is a uh, CMB uh, combat maneuver replaces your attack. Well, can I step five? Then? Yes, yes, you can. Erasmus. And can I use a potion on myself now nope. or now? Hi. I was a little annoyed with himself for going at the wrong end of the You can have pulled out a potion as you took a step back. I'll allow that. Okay. All right, Erasmus, what do you want to do? Hold on, I clicked on the right. Okay. I want to move myself, uh, I want to move myself up. Come on. Uh, how far can I get? I can't tell if these are squares. They are squares. If you use the arrow, if you're clicked so, on your character, you can use the arrow keys to move yourself. That's you. Yeah, I'm moving myself. I thought there was a little arrow that we could do to uh, tell us how. Yeah, far that's on. If on the on the bar on the left, there's a little thing that looks like a ruler coming out of a circle. Oh, and if you click on that, that will give you the measurement tool. Thank you, You're Steve. Welcome. Come on, buddy. Say good morning. So I get to about here. Okay. So you can pick yourself up and, and move gonna... yourself now. So you switch back to the pointer. And then you pick right. yourself up and drop you yourself there. All right. And then yes. I will... I will uh, unleash a volley of magic missiles as well. As All right. well. Click the magic missile macro that I made. Yep, there we go. Uh, all right, is your castle level set at five? Uh, I did it on my Yeah, team. but so there's two play. This is the annoying part about how they handle caster levels. They don't go off of your your natural level. So under your configuration tab, hold on. I'm, I'm playing with your sheet. Okay. So there's, see this line okay. here that says CL under spell casting on the right? So if you go hold across Arcan, to... Arf if you look across Arcanist, Towards the mm -hmm. very end, after the word, the letters SC, there's a line for CL. That's yeah. your spell, your caster level. So if we change this to five, now roll your now roll your magic missiles on the macro. Okay. And you'll see it'll roll the extra one that we need because you got a four and a five. I'll let you keep that. Uh, yeah, hold on. There yeah, it happened too many times, but that's okay. Uh, okay. four, five, and yeah, you got a two on the next one. So nine, ten, eleven points of damage. Uh, this thing looks very, very scorpions. hurt. Why did it have to be scorpions? Um, the pegasi will go and they will stay back. Brianna. All right, so Brianna is going to exit the tent. Uh, let's see. I don't know how I don't know how to make the do it do the clicker thingy, so I'm just gonna show you how I move okay. and then I'm gonna move there. Well, you can always use the arrow keys as well. Oh okay. Just well I want to move square here. by square. Okay. So I'm gonna move right yep. there and then I'm going to cast uh, cure light on okay. Nikolai. Uh heal seven Nikolai. Thank you. I hope it helps. Every every bit helps. Um, this thing will uh take a few steps back, and actually, this thing is just gonna straight up leave. Uh, it is going to choose to try to fight, try to survive. Another day? Uh, yes. We'll try to live another day. And not die another day. Can someone heal me up more? Yeah, I will give you another 
uh, cure. Because I'm down like 20 something points still. Uh, should be 12. He's really down. He's down. Do you want a third one? Uh, so I'm down nine now. Probably. Okay, 11. So that Thank should you. heal you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Woof. So aggressive, these it was, scorpions. It was good that you were keeping watch, Nikolai. My watch has seemed very unlucky, you know? <laughs> it does. <laughs> um, well, I guess uh, you all should go back to sleep and I can finish my watch. Yeah. You all can rest okay. for the remainder of the evening. And in the morning, you will wake up refreshed. A new day. Well done. Excuse me. You can pack up the tent. I said, why do I do this with layers? You can pack up the tent, put out the fire, ride on into the into the distance. Um. I suppose there is, I think, a limited chance something could. Yeah, there is one thing that could happen. Let's see. We're going to be attacked by flying abolettes. Yep, you got it. That is exactly what it could be. There's any opportunities for this? The red winged beast followed me from Sierra Savant. It long enough to get here. Yeah, you guys can travel for the next day unaccosted. Um, but as you uh, as you reach the evening, you are starting to enter into the the edge of the deserts. Uh, let me move you back to the map. Not far from Fort Jericho. So you're basically right Ooh, around I here. Only on foot even, only a couple of days away. Um, and you can all set down to bed once more. When we get to Fort Jericho, let's look into scorpion repellent. Because <laughs> this is a thing. Right? We've had With tigers more than the usual amount of scorpion attacks, that's for sure. Yeah. What do you got against? What do you got for giant scorpions? How many rations do we go through a day? Is it like three or? So I'm just ruling it that you'll go through the equivalent of one. So we're going to call okay. one a day's worth of food. I just want to make sure I'm taking yeah. them off. Um... I'm just trying to make it easier to keep track of. Um, but yeah, you will all in your rest, you will all rest, and Nikolai, in the night, you will feel a soft sensation, like a hand on your shoulder, um, a very, like, warm, I can't, ooh, thank you for the raid, Kurt. Right as we're getting near the end. Um... You'll feel what feels like a soft hand on your shoulder, familiar hand, and a voice that says, Tell Brianna we appreciate that she cared. That what? That she cared. That she cared? Yes. Who is And this? for a moment, you'll see, like, a, a giant bat fly in the distance towards you, look at you, and then turn and fly away. Did you say a bat? Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. Ah. Uh, one of the bat guys apparently can change into a bat, maybe. I'll tell Brianna about that in the morning. Okay. 
And then he turns into a scorpion and gives you 60 points of damage. That was real weird. All right. Um, so you guys can wake up on yet another morning with a very, very uneventful, right, evening? Is there any news that anyone wants to share? I, I, okay, I sorry. I didn't know. I didn't know if oh. maybe she'd have a reaction. He, he wants to. Yeah, no, I, I think we all want to see the dramatic him. recreation. <laughs> Are you two one of these numbers? No, I was already dressed like up a... as a bat, but that was last night. Oh. So should have done it then. Like yeah. a majestic bat. <laughs> was this? Didn't you go on a date with one of the Batman or something? Brianna will sort of tear up. She'll say, "Yeah, Donahue. Do you think that? Do you think that he fell to whatever was happening at the school?" I don't know. I mean, the creature was a bat, so maybe they were able to transform and get out of there. I hope they're okay. Did we determine if they had any spell casting, if they were druids or anything, or did we just take them as Batman? You know they had spell casting from when you went down there and fought them. Yeah. A little bit. Maybe they maybe trying to be cheerful, your says maybe they just, you know, used their spell casting powers to change into bats and they're, you know, living the life they wanted to lead. I hope that's true. Um that is a good point. Perhaps they can just shift into that form. I've heard of druids being able to do that. I've never seen I've never seen that from a druid myself. <laughs> if you'd gotten to know so him much, long enough, you would have. So much shade toward our druid. <laughs> because I can't do that. Um, so yeah, Brianna feels sad, but she's kind of hopeful that perhaps they were passing that along after they had escaped as bats or something. Okay. Uh, the five of you can mount up again on your pegasi you lucked into. And... We're the strangely luckiest and unluckiest party at the same yep. time. The eight is providing. It will provide. Um, and the five of you can fly what's left of the way to the outside of Fort Jericho. Um, and as you arrive, uh, several of the soldiers will rush out. Uh, riders on Pegasi! Who are you? Oh, Wait! Yes. We recognize you. You've been, you were here not long ago. A few weeks ago. Yes. We were helping with the incident down in Harveston. What brings you back here? Uh, well, we have, we come from Harveston with a request. Um, we're looking for the son of Jericho Carbinger. Carbinger? How do you know of this one? Um, the person that sent us, um, said to look him up he is carrying a key of his they uh they start um, to confer amongst each other um and then they reach up to their helmets and they place a hand on their helmets and they seem to be whispering something and then they drop their spears and point them at you uh, we'll need the five of you to come with us. Uh, please yield over your weapon. Please drop any weapons you have on the ground and any spell component pouches that you might have and follow us in. Or and, and we will lead you in. Certainly. I will, before I do that, I say, I just want to thank the Pegasi for getting us here. And I will, um, if I can, like, Pat the peg aside that I was riding and, and thank them. Yeah, give me another diplomacy Carry. check. All right. Yeah, I will I'll let you pet it. 
Um, and they will sort of, like, uh, out here, drop down and just kind of sit for a while. Um, and then I will comply with the guards. I'll drop the sword that I had picked up and, you know, anything weapon-y. I think I carry a dagger on me. <laughs> I'll drop that okay. as well. And the rest of you? Yeah, I'll go ahead and set down my weapons. Drop my pouch. Okay. Yes. I have no problem with it. Yeah, they will take you. I have problems. They will take your stuff. Um, and they will lead you inside. Uh, they put it all in a, in a single bag, and as they come through, they pass it off to one of the guards. Um, and they will lead you deep into Fort Jericho. Um, inside you can see people training. You can see, like, uh, people studying uh, in places, sitting... Uh, off to look against the buildings, other people roaming about doing their daily deeds, and they lead you back to a large building, uh, one you've been in before. Uh, speak to a couple of the guards, the gates open within this building, or the doors open within this building. You are led down a long series of corridors until you reach one set of doors at the end of a long hall. Uh, the doors are open, and the five of you are let inside. And once you are let inside, the doors are closed behind you. Seated in a chair behind a large oak desk is a rather old-looking and very short halfling man who wears a key around his neck uh, just outside of, his, of the full plate he has on his body. Um, I will speak in halfling, and I will say, "Oh, hello. Are you uh, the cut son with of the Jared? in common? Cut with that. That's not how we do things around here. The common tongue is what we'll okay. share." I will switch back to common. Um, Seems like you, a delight, that guy. Are you uh, the son of Jericho Carbinger? I am. Uh, we were sent here by Candor to retrieve a key. How do you know of Kandor? We've met him. We've been working with him. How are you sure it's him? I will describe... He's very the... distinctive. Yeah, I will describe, like, my impression of Kandor, that he's kind of scattered, and he makes a lot of references that we don't quite get, but he seems to be working on a problem with, like, magic, or he's always talking about timelines i'll just basically describe candor as i know him to um, so he needs the thing from the box then yes he said there was um it, it there it's a cellar or no 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 the box basement? i hold this key that holds the great power that's within that's within the chest i suppose that was he said there was a basement but perhaps it's a box what are you talking about I know what was told in the legend. One day, Kandor would send a team to look for the key, saying that there was a great and terrible thing that was coming, and I would go and I would open the chest, and within the chest would be the weapon that would save us all. I, I don't know specifically what is in there, but he did mention that there was a lot of like magical things down there. Well, come with me. I will take you to, I will take you to where this chest is, and I will show you what truly is what it. And, and as he walks, he will say, "And what is the threat that we that we face?" There seems to be uh, something going on in the forests that we know about. What what was uh, it? There's a. Um. There was a, some uh, poaching going on. Poaching? Unicorns being No, killed. no, no. It must be bigger. Demons, devils. Which of these? Um, 
Army of the Undead, does that count? Yeah, there's an army of undead that just destroyed uh, the magic school in, in Mursad. I would think that would be pretty big. The whole school? They were sacking it when we managed to get out. That's what Kandor told us. Then this is of urgence. Yes. I will... I will, un I will open the chest, we will get the weapon, and I will send my teams to to rescue the people, what people may be left there. Um, and he gets to uh, a door, and he reaches out and takes another key from a pouch that he has and opens it. Um, and as he opens the door, he will lead you inside. Uh, this room, on the outside there were two guards standing outside of the door. On the inside, there are two guards uh, that are like as they they look as though they're leaned up against the wall, and then they kind of stand at attention uh, when this person Ooh. comes in. Um, and he will walk up to the chest, gentlemen. Time has finally come, and he will take the key off of off from around his neck, and he will kneel down to the chest. He will put the key into the chest, and he will utter a few words over top of it in Draconic. Uh, the words for um, the gods can no longer save us. Oh, that's not And he will wow. unlock the chest and open it. Where is the weapon? There is nothing in the chest. I think that's why Kandor wants the key. Where is the weapon? He said something about it. Uh, maybe in this basement that he needs the. To, to we were told by Kandor that there was a weapon in here. That in a time of great need, he would call for us to unleash the weapon. Where is the weapon? We don't he don't know. He didn't even. Us. He didn't even mention anything about a weapon to us. He just sent us to get a key. Um, but, you know, he was working on a way to communicate with us. Perhaps we can ask him? Well, hopefully, you'll find a way to have him communicate with you while you're in the brig. Called it. And that is where we'll end tonight's session. Was anybody, was anybody surprised that Kander got us thrown in the fucking jail? <laughs> everybody was just everybody was just silent waiting for the bad shit to just unfold you know what I mean everybody's like oh this I, is just gonna go I thought the guards were taking us directly to jail <laughs> I didn't think we would even get to interact with uh, um do we get any you XP? do get some XP because you will get some rest time in the uh in the <laughs> jail um we're in the jailhouse now. So yeah, let's grab up some of your sweet, sweet XPs. Um, let's see here. It's not going to be a lot, though. Um, but you guys did get here much faster than expected. We, we also did get to ride Pegasi, so that's pretty yep. cool. Um, each of you can take... Uh, 1,200 XP. Nice. nice. That's what you get for falling unconscious and being brought back from, by magical means. Mm -hmm. That's how we used to get to first level <laughs> when you were zero level. All right. Well, um, I am, we're going to call it a night. Thank you all uh, for joining us from the raid. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you guys on Tuesday. Good night. Good night.